It still seems weird and somehow wrong that news about the British royal family is discussed first on US outlets such as talk show host Kelly Reaper's podcast and on the pages and website of People magazine, next to stories about the Kardashians and actor Will Smith denying he slept with a man. However, this is the world the Duke and Duchess of Sussex live in, this is the prism through which they are now viewed, this is where the absurd vanilla puffery of their softest scoop ice cream is peddled in the hope that it will be swallowed whole. Reactions may vary, as well as recollections. Some might even choke on the first mouthful. Omid Scobie's new book Endgame is out at the end of this month and an extract has appeared in People magazine. American readers might be surprised to learn that, according to this highly partisan account, the death of Queen Elizabeth II was not about the passing of a much-loved monarch and a somber moment for British people and our shared history. It was all about Prince Harry. Although Harry and Meghan have indicated they had nothing to do with the book, there is a great deal about who told him what and when about our 96-year-old Queen's final decline. Also his travel arrangements to Balmoral, his disappointments about this and that, his sour surprise that not only was his welcome home far from warm, but that Meghan's presence at the Queen's deathbed was surplus to requirements, too. God knows what could have caused such family fraudia. Anyone with any ideas should write them on a silence not silent postcard and send it to the toxic racist Windsor Rotters, C. O. Broken Dog Bolt Alley, London. According to Endgame, Harry was especially peeved that his brother did not respond to his texts when he was trying to cadge a lift to Scotland on the RAF jet that flew Prince William, Prince Andrew and the Wessexes. You have to laugh. What did Harry expect? If you shovel endless steaming manure onto the family fruit patch, Surely you must expect a rich crop of raspberries in return.